So uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to show you some, um, and these are old, so don't don't judge them. Some electrostatic panels that were made in uh, the Netherlands, and the the brand still exists. It's called Solo Sound, and it was actually uh, the reason why I began to make like exotic, weird kind of loudspeakers. I bought a set, and I'll show you an image right now of solo static force it was a small panel really tiny by the way actually for electrostatic that is uh, does mid and high duty they um, were rather efficient because they used very high voltages on the bias and as well used a step up ratio of I think one 120 or something Combine that with like 5 kilovolt of bias <laughs> and a very small uh, uh, spacer ratio, uh, well, resulted in a quite loud thing actually. And uh, there are some reviews you can even find about those. They had a solo static 4 and a solo static 8, I believe, and, and some weird shapes like double or triple force in a sort of a I don't know, in a circle or something, I don't know, with a transmission line and such. Oh, well, some really nice products. I forgot the designer's name. That's too bad. But I'll show you one of these panels. So this is one of the stators of, of one of these solostatic panels. Uh, it's not in the best shape, as you can see. It chipped off some of the paint. And overall, it looks kind of, um, well... Uh, done for actually <laughs> I got some here this one for instance this is a later model looks a, a bit better but you can see it, it's patched up where it apparently arced and then someone put some glue in there uh, which is not helping at all uh, and I, th I refurbished this these as well like a gazillion years ago uh, when I didn't know as much as I do now or and still you know I <laughs> I might make mistakes a lot of mistakes still so um, this was when I really had no money and just had these panels and just wanted to play around and see what see what everything does you know just learn or how you call it it's sort of an adventure but these are the panels uh, this is one stator, this is a complete um, complete panel uh, and it had four of these and uh, one thing is uh, this is not clear so uh, this one is easier to show uh, what they did, they used normal PCB they drilled a bunch of holes, quite a lot and uh, if you look close, if we are able to yeah you can see that the hole is actually smaller than the copper hole and that's uh, really nice because uh, this PCB material is, is rather good in a good insulator so because you don't have the copper on the edge of the hole you can get, get well you can use higher bias or higher uh, step up ratio less prone to arcing that's that's the reason actually or also less prone to uh, creating ozone or ozone um, plasma well it, it plasma will create ozone <laughs> but <laughs> that was not the word I was looking for uh, and then there is this in this case a glossy uh, coating over it I'm not sure if it's a it's not a conformal coating it feels like it's really like lacquer well it both works but I can imagine a conformal coating, uh, well, what might work really well as well. You know, the stuff meant to be sprayed on PCBs. I don't know. Should look up the breakdown voltage of both of the materials. But this is not so flexible. So, for instance, here, this is a really old panel. It cracked. So you can see the bare copper. Another thing is, is that they didn't put copper on these edges. And that's a good idea, because, and this is actually not original, so don't mind that. Normally it would be, I think it's polystyrene frame, 
like this. <laughs> Here was carton because I couldn't find any materials back in the day. And this worked out okay for me, but it's definitely not ideal because carton can of course uh, get moist and is not the best insulator uh, to begin with. So don't do this as I did. But uh, yeah, so if you make the foil conductive, because what was happening, uh, if I have another panel, no, maybe, wait. So, you got another panel, also another stator, for instance, if we just remove this and without the foil. And what they did is put a copper tape here, not completely on the edge. They soldered it to here and, and here, so you can connect the next panel to the bias voltage. And then this piece of copper connected to the conductive layer on the membrane here. So this whole foil was conductive. Maybe not the edges, by the way. That would be a good thing to tape these edges off. Uh, but the reason why there is only copper in the middle is because these sides otherwise would count as a capacity as well. And you want to have the capacity of a, a, a ESL as low as possible. And in this case, uh, the capacity only adds in the stuff or in the place that really counts to make noise. On the spacer, the mylar is not able to move, of course. You don't want it to move there. So if it was conductive here, it would add to the capacity of a panel, and you don't want that. And this is, well, as simple as you can get it, but still, it's, it's really nice. Then I found, and that's kind of weird, I found these. And for some people, that might be a well-known brand, Audiostatic. Well, I don't know. But I think they're kind of the same. I think that even the whole pattern, yeah, aligns. So with these, except for these three holes there, I'm not sure what that is. I have no clue if someone made them make these themselves and just called it audiostatic. Audiostatic. So with the Holland and M3. I'm pretty sure it is the real Audiostatic. But Audiostatic is more known for the wire electrostatic speakers. And as far as I know, the designer of Audiostatic, I think was Bernd or something? No, not Bernd? Well, I don't know. I should have looked it up before I did this video, but it's a different guy from Audiostatic than it is from Solo Sound. What I believe Solo Sound was first with these panels, but they are. Really, they're exactly the same. So maybe they did some collaboration or something. I don't know, but it's quite the same. Here they did something wrong or wrong. I should not let this copper extend to this to this edge. And here they uh, they didn't extend it to the edge. But yeah, they're kind of the same, and they have holes here. So I guess they were screwed in place or maybe they were not glued these are glued maybe they use something else um, and here they have three pads without copper and what they did i think what they also did in some of the solo sound panels except they did it in the middle as you can see here there is no copper is put some sort of um, silicon crap in here and on the other side it keeps the membrane in the middle so it never reaches the X-Max so it will never slam into this front side and arc all over the place. Uh, I think this is the same but they might have used three dots. The funny thing is as well that these dots is kind of where um, it's mentioned a lot in the audiostatic speakers for instance like controlled resonance, uh, I don't know, uh, all kinds of different, name, different names for it, but it's uh, funny to see that 
they might have made these together or or one copied the other I don't know but they are nice so when I was playing with my CNC uh, I think one and a half year ago or something maybe longer because it uses the old spindle I made sort of the same panels but I must admit without the etching oh the cat wants to go inside hey boys yeah straight for the <laughs> for the food uh, I made some myself but bigger because I thought it's quite annoying to make uh, so many panels if you can get away with just less panels if you use the same trick by adding in the middle for instance or a few dots of silicon these are blank uh, it has no coating so it corrodes that's for one uh, and it's not etched on the inside of the hole so what would be nice for these is actually put them in an etching bath just for uh, well not too long not too long that everything is gone of course but it will start to etch mostly on the edges of the holes for instance and and such so it might help to get some some of the sharp bits if there is any uh, probably there is off uh, and it will result in less arcing uh, then of course it would be really nice to have a if you have a spray gun or lacquer which is really thin and just roll it on and isolate it and you can create something like this although these were meant to play really loud at incredible high bias which I would not recommend because they they did so for uh, well quite a lot of years but after a while the only panels I could find were all arced all over the place uh, it, it would eat the coating here like the lacquer as well so after a while it filled all over the place and you would destroy the whole panel and have to sand it all back down isolate it again both sides do the membrane again coating again so it's better to use less bias and use a little bit more surface area to compensate for SPL if you want to so for instance this could be nice but add, add one more that would be nicer or maybe add two more that would be again nicer <laughs> could also make it uh, a stacked ESL but I'll explain that later on but I have a lot of these and uh, I, I'm having well a lot I mean <laughs> I got carried away actually <laughs> by me making these I think by uh, looking to the the mill milling all these holes and uh, it was so fast and it looked so nice I decided to waste all my five or 0 0.5 millimeter PCB on it rather stupid idea if you ask me should have saved it for some more interesting projects but hell I didn't so here we are um, I got loads of these and uh, if people might be interested I got two styles where I removed the copper here and ones where I didn't and uh, where the ones where I didn't you can use this track to um, well put the bias on or something and uh, plug it to the next one but or you can just leave it there it's not connected to anything so uh, I instead of used one big copper thing I did segment it so this and this is connected together so you can make a segmented panel like this middle piece is doing uh, up till whatever you know full range and these two are only doing up till for instance uh, 10k or something this will increase dispersion and uh, while keeping the same output at low frequency so that's really nice but you can choose to use it or you can just connect them all together which gives you uh, far more output in the top end with but usually uh, 
the top end is not a problem. But if you would be interested, um, yeah, I would happy to sell a few of these uh, for like, uh, I don't know, well, I have to think about that, but not too expensive. But yeah, it's it, the material itself is not the cheapest. It took me some work, but they're just sitting here and I'm not using them, so I might as well get rid of it because I'm collecting too much crap. Crap that I, even these, when saying I want to sell them, or if anyone is interested at all. Even now I think, or should I keep them and just maybe make something with it. But I think this uh, for a, a long, very long time already, so I'm not sure if I ever will. So I might as well get rid of them. But yeah, that's the solo sound and apparently also audio static. Uh, this is the reason why I started all this building, building of non-normal driver loudspeakers. Yeah, what, what's up, Puss? <laughs> <laughs>